I mentioned in a previous video that I did that it's usually the smaller things that can ruin a perfectly laid out plan. We need the food, we need the water, we need some of these higher cost supplies. But there is a huge list of lower cost everyday items we need to have available when disaster strikes. These things may not be the quote unquote life saving supplies that make the headlines today, but in a disaster, they're going to be the why didn't I think about that or the I wish I had one of those type supplies. Today, I want to go over a list of 20 low cost everyday items that I put together that we should be hoarding or stockpiling that will be beneficial in a disaster or an emergency situation. And also, most of the products that I mention on this list are going to be some of the best bartering supplies or bartering items if that scenario presents itself. Now, before we get into this list, I want to clear up something real quick because I'm bound to get comments like I always do whenever I say hoarding. There is a difference between the definition of hoarding and the mental illness of hoarding. And prepping is completely different than the mental disorder. The definition of hoarding is to amass, whether that's money or valued objects, and hide or store away. That is what we do as preppers. Hoarding is when you just collect stuff just to collect stuff and you put it wherever it will fit and you have no idea what you have or where it is. That is basically the opposite of preparedness. So when I say hoarding or when preppers talk about hoarding, it's more along the lines of if you have a bank account, you are hoarding cash. And a lot of people think that preppers are the cause of these shortages when things go sideways. But the reality is, we buy or we hoard these things now to avoid being part of those shortages. All right, so I'll get off my soapbox here and I'll start going through this list. I'm going to keep these short and sweet. I don't want to waste an hour of your time talking about trash bags and paracord. A lot of these don't need that much explanation anyway. Number one I have here is lighters. And lighters are an indispensable tool for preppers, and we shouldn't just have one or two. We should have a bunch of these. Lighters serve multiple purposes, like starting fires, sterilization and repair tasks. They're compact. We can have one in a bug out bag and everyday carry in our pockets. Lighters are just one of those things that you, it's a must have when it comes to preparedness. And while you can get some of the cheaper lighters, say that you would find at the dollar store or Walgreens, the Bic lighter are probably the best. You also have the Zippos and other lighters, but I think the, the most reliable lighter that you're going to be able to get is a Bic lighter. And number two I have here on the list is matches, the stormproof matches. And there are all sorts of different kinds of matches that you can buy, but the stormproof matches are going to be the most reliable ones. You also have the longer stick matches to help get a fire started, which is going to be a whole lot easier than using one of those lighters. But matches, and particularly stormproof matches, are great to have. They're low cost. You can get a bunch of them. They don't expire necessarily. So you can get a bunch of these and just store them anywhere. And this is something you can get a bunch over the course of time, and you'll have plenty when the need arises. The next one I have is fuels. And this is not necessarily one of the lower cost items on this list, but it is one of the most important, whether you're talking about butane, propane, firewood, alcohol for alcohol stoves. Having the fuel necessary is going to be vital in any sort of emergency or disaster situation. Along with these, you need to have the stoves like the backpack stoves or the alcohol stoves or the indoor burners that use butane, like I have the Iwutani. Whatever cooking method or heating method that you have, make sure you have all of these fuels and have thought about ways to cook in a disaster. Next on the list, I have toilet paper. And I know this is not necessarily a shocker to anyone or something you haven't really thought about, but I'll tell you what, in a survival situation, in a disaster or an emergency situation, this is one of those you don't know what you've got until it's gone type items. Sanitation and hygiene is going to be critical in a situation like this. So making sure you have a large stock of toilet paper, 
and you are good to go for an extended period of time is really important. Next, I have bleach, and bleach is one of those that maybe you don't want to have, you know, 50, 60 gallons of bleach stored, but bleach is one of those things that you, you'll want to have a few gallons at the very least. Bleach is a powerful disinfectant. It can be used to purify water. It can be used for sanitation and safety reasons sanitizing surfaces, tools, or equipment, helping to reduce the risk of infection and disease transmission. So bleach is one of those products that is useful in a bunch of different areas and a bunch of different applications. So bleach is one of those things that you should have in your stockpile and how much you have is really up to you. Number seven here, I have bars of soap. And while a lot of us don't use bars of soap anymore. I don't. I usually use the all-in-one body wash because I'm a guy and that's what I do. It's just a whole lot easier and a whole lot cleaner. But bars of soap will not only be beneficial to maintaining your sanitation and your hygiene, but they're also a good bartering supply as well. The shelf life on soap is going to last longer than the stuff that you would get in the bottle, the shampoos or the body washes and it can be stored a whole lot easier. They come in different sizes. You could even make your own soap. Next here, I have trash bags, and the king of trash bags is the contractor yard bags. We should have at least one or two boxes of those, but the other trash bags are good to have as well. The ones we use on a regular basis, you can stock up more on. You've got the larger black trash bags that you use for picking up leaves and things like that. But trash bags are one of those multi-purpose items that isn't just a sort of a container. It can be used to waterproof things. That, that could be yourself. It could be used to seal up windows or to black out windows. So trash bags to me, and, and like I said, assorted different sizes are just something that we should have on hand and as many as you think you need or you can store. Next, I have the really cheap solar blankets, and this is sort of along the same lines as the trash bag. These can be picked up for like a dollar fifty, somewhere in that price range, and they are multi-purpose. These can be used to make shelter. They can shelter yourself, be used as you know as they're intended to the emergency blanket. But there are a lot of other uses as well. And as thin and as small as these are, they are pretty strong. So because of their price and because of their usefulness, I think it's good to, you know, get 30, 40, maybe even 50 of these little solar blankets and have them ready and available if you need them. Next, I have zip ties. And while there are other options to fasten things, zip ties just make it really easy and also ensures that you have something fastened properly. We can, you know, there's different types of knots and we can use cordage, but a zip tie sort of takes all of that out of the equation and you know it's going to work. There are a number of different situations where zip ties would be necessary. And like just like everything else on this list, they are easy to store and you don't have to worry about the conditions and things like that. So have a different assortment of sizes of zip ties and it's one of those things where you're not going to miss it until you actually need it. So I think zip ties are one of those that everyone should have and should have a, an assortment of different sizes. Number 11 here, I have different types of tape and the main one being duct tape and even electrical tape. Duct tape is that, you know, the go to you can basically fix anything or we think we can fix anything with duct tape. But in an emergency situation where we may not have access to the tools or supplies that are the right tools and supplies, duct tape is one of those things to get the job done, even if it's temporarily. You've also got electrical tape, which for electrical wires keep you from shocking yourself, but can also weatherproof things. And you've got the painter's tape and the scotch tape if you do need to put up film over your windows or black out your windows you can use that painter's tape without damaging things. So it's just important to have a bunch of different types of tape laying around. And this is whether you're talking about a disaster or whether you're just talking about everyday life. And sort of along the same lines is cordage. And cordage is one of those things that is useful in a number of situations. You've got the jute twine, you've got bank line like I have in my bug out bag or the prepper favorite paracord. 
But cordage is going to be useful in a lot more situations than we even realize. Even if you were at home, in a bug out situation, it's critical. At home, you just never know when it's going to be useful. And then to wrap up this little section with the zip ties, duct tape, and cordage, I've also got glues. This is sort of my MacGyver section where these are the supplies you're going to need in an emergency or disaster type situation. If you need to put something together, if you need to do some sort of DIY filter or repair some damage around the home, these are the things that you're going to want to have on hand. They've got the really strong types of glues like the E6000, I believe it's called. You've got the wood glues. You've got super glue. And I think it's good just to have some of those laying around. Yes, you could do quite a bit with duct tape, but it's not going to do as good of a job as glue. Or maybe in conjunction with glue, you're going to have a stronger hold, a stronger seal. So I think all four of these are important. The glues, the cordage, the duct tape, and the zip ties like I said, you know, sort of the, the MacGyver type stuff, the emergency think on your feet supplies. Number 14 here, I have flashlights. And this is one of those things that all of us preppers that have been doing this for a while probably have 10 or even 20 different flashlights laying around the house. But flashlights are really important. You can get some of these really cheap. You don't need the, the $100 flashlights, although one or two of those aren't bad. You can buy some lower cost ones. Just have as many of these as you can or you want. I have a, a bin that I store some of these cheaper flashlights in, some of the extra flashlights. I have flashlights in almost every drawer of my house. And if it does come down to a situation where you have a friend or neighbor that needs one, you can hand off one of these smaller, cheaper little flashlights and not worry about it because you've got plenty extra. Or in a barter situation, a $2 or $5 flashlight is going to be worth far more than that in a situation like that. So flashlights are just one of those things over time you can collect, buy one here, buy one there. Why not? It's one of those why not pick up a few items. Next on my list here, I have instant coffee. And instant coffee isn't nearly as good as regular coffee. So I also suggest you have a percolator or a French press, something like that. But in a situation where maybe all you're drinking is water, coffee may not be a lifesaver, but it's going to feel like a lifesaver. You can put these smaller packs in bug out bags, get home bags. And because they are smaller and individually packed, they make great bartering supplies. So I think instant coffee is good to stockpile. Next on my list, I have band-aids and bandages, uh, medical tape, those types of things. Band-aids, medical supplies you can never have enough of anyway. You just never know. And, th and that's one of those things you do not want to run out of in a disaster or in an emergency situation. So having a good stockpile of Band-Aids that you build up over the course of a year, maybe two years, doesn't mean you need to go out and buy it today. But Band-Aids and bandages are one of those supplies that it's good to just have a little bit extra of, whether you are talking about an emergency or just everyday life. Next, I have batteries, and I probably should have put this right after flashlights, but batteries are really important, and you can get the lower cost batteries. I've researched this quite a bit, and there are some lower cost batteries that you can get on Amazon that have basically that are the same as the Energizers or the Duracells, just at a much cheaper price. I do suggest, you know, if you are worried about that, make sure and go with the Energizers, the Duracells, the, the batteries that are going to last. But think about the batteries that you need. Think about the, the supplies that you would need them in and make sure you have an assortment of each of those and enough of each of those that are going to last you an extended period of time, whether that's a power outage or other emergency. Next, I have hand sanitizer and hand sanitizer. We, we saw during the pandemic how important hand sanitizer was and how quickly that disappeared so I think having quite a bit of hand sanitizer on hand is something that we should all do. An emergency situation could mean a lack of running water. So the ability to take showers, the ability to clean ourselves is going to be severely lacking. So having hand sanitizer 
and things to, to you know help us keep from getting sick are going to be really important. And again, this is one of those, if you buy the little smaller bottles, great for bartering and something that will go first when people are panic buying. We saw this during the pandemic. So stuck up on some hand sanitizer. And finally on my list here, I have wet wipes. And this is for sort of the same reason, that sanitation. It may be a few days or, or even a week before we're able to take a shower. And even if we are able to take a shower, unless you've got a solar shower or some way to heat up water, people are going to be, people in your family are going to be pretty hesitant about taking a shower in the first place. So having some wet wipes on hand will just help maintain that. Now, over the long run, this is not a, a good solution. This is not something where you're using wet wipes to clean yourself for a month straight. That's not very sanitary. But if you are out working in the yard or fixing something and you don't have the ability to take a shower, this is a good way to just clean your hands, clean your arms, clean your pits, whatever you need to do. So I think having wet wipes on hand and having a bunch of them is something that we should do. So that's my list here. And I know there are literally probably hundreds more items that could be added to this list. I know as you've been watching this, you've probably thought of a few already. If you have any ideas, make sure to leave them in the comments below and let everyone know what items you stockpile and, and what items you stock up on. And to sort of expand on this, like I mentioned earlier, I have a video and it's titled 21 Things That Preppers Know Will Be Priceless After a Collapse. And it goes into not necessarily the lower cost supplies or the bartering supplies, but it goes through a lot more items that will be beneficial and necessary in a survival, a disaster, or a full, full scale collapse type situation. If that's something you're interested in, have a look at that video. But that's it for today, everyone. Until next time, take care and prepare. We will talk to you all later.